This video makes use of several of our bottom-up rules. In particular, it uses arrow in and also tilde in. The argument that we're going to prove is quite simple. It's got uh, P arrow C is the only premise, tilde C arrow tilde P is the conclusion, and of course we've got it set up over here by the side. It does make sense. P arrow C means if P then C. And we've mentioned that this is logically equivalent to if not C, then not P. This actually makes most sense if you think about P or C as a necessary condition statement. Necessary conditions are read backwards, so this says C is necessary for P. Well, if it's true that C is necessary for P, then it's also true that if you don't have C, then you don't have P. So, let's do the proof. Well. We always start proofs at the top and do whatever we can. Obviously, all we have is this one boring conditional, so there is nothing that we can do at the top. If we had P on another line, we could do arrow out, but we don't, and so there really is nothing to be done at the top. When you're stuck at the top, you turn your attention to the bottom, and you immediately identify the main connective. The main connective in this case is definitely the arrow. You know that it's the arrow because the arrow is outside parentheses. How do you know that it's not one of these tildes? Well, the tilde can only be the main connective when it's the only thing that's outside parentheses. So if we had this formula here, tilde parentheses, C arrow P, then the tilde would be the main thing. But if you have an arrow or an ampersand that's outside parentheses, it will take precedence over the tilde. Now, if we can identify the main connective at the bottom, then that will tell us immediately what to do. The system that we are trying to build is one that when you're stuck at the top and you go to the bottom, you look at the main connective and it just tells you what you should do. If you have an arrow at the bottom, it's always going to be arrow in. If you have a tilde as the main connective at the bottom, it's going to be tilde in. If you have no connective at all, that's when you'll do tilde out. And if you have an ampersand at the bottom, well then no boxes at all. Instead, you'll do two lines for ampersand, which is extremely simple. But in this case, we've agreed that it's an arrow. Therefore, we're definitely doing arrow in. OK, well, we don't have to think about this. At this point, we know we're supposed to draw a box because it's a box rule. And when you draw a box, that box should occupy the entire available space from the premises down to the conclusion. Because once you have completed this box, you will be done with the proof. Now, notice the way this works. If you know what the main connective is, the arrow, then you know that everything in front of it is P, and everything after it is Q. This is incredibly mindless. You take the P and you put it at the top. You take the Q and you put it at the bottom. So what goes at the top? Well, tilde C. And what goes at the bottom is tilde P. Notice, you don't want to get this arrow in confused with tilde in and tilde out. Tilde in and tilde out, you assume the opposite of formulas. But when you're doing arrow in, you're not assuming the opposite of anything. It's the entire antecedent that goes to the top, the entire consequent at the bottom. OK, well, this is going to be line number two. And it's got to have a justification. It's really just an assumption. And we're going to call it a provisional assumption because it's an assumption that is good only for as long as we're in the box. Provided that we're in the box, tilde C is available to us. And that's provisional and provided that. They're basically the meaning the same thing. Of course, we're thinking about the rule arrow in when we make this PA, and so it's good to write that right after the PA. Now, notice that we won't put a, a line number or a justification for tilde P right now, because tilde P has become our new goal. That now is the bottom of the box, 
In effect, it's the conclusion that we're trying to prove. Constructing a box like this and setting it up really is mindless. If you know how to read the rule, you can do this without even understanding what you're doing. But it would be kind of nice if we did understand it, so let's talk about the rule for just a second. When you're trying to prove P or o Q, what is it that you're trying to prove? You're trying to prove that if P is the case, then Q is the case. Or in other words, that P leads to Q. You're not actually trying to prove that P is true or that Q is true. And that's why when we're proving this, it's okay for us to just give ourselves P and say, well, let's pretend that P is true. Because we're not trying to prove that P is true. We're trying to prove that if you gave us P, we could get to Q. In fact, sometimes I like to put an arrow right here and say, well, see, the way this works is it says, if you give me P, then I will get to Q. And if I can do that, then I can prove that P gets to Q. You show the vertical arrow, and that proves the horizontal arrow. Okay, so that's exactly what's going on over here. We're trying to show that if tilde C was true, then tilde P would also have to be true. So let's pretend that tilde C is true, and we'll show that that would get us to tilde P. Every time you have a box set up, you go back to the top of the proof, and you see if you can make progress. The first three rules that we learned, arrow out, ampersand out, and ampersand in, those were top-down rules. And so now we're going to look up at the top and see if we can make use of any of those. Well, the truth is we clearly can't, right? We still can't work on this arrow because we don't have P on another line by itself. Tilde C is uninteresting. So there, just, there is still nothing to be done up at the top. All right, that's not a big deal. Whenever you're stuck at the top, it's time to go back to the bottom. What's the important bottom at this point? It's tilde P. That's our current goal, so it is the bottom. Well, when you go to the bottom, you identify the main connective. What is the main connective? It's the tilde. Okay, which of these four things tells us what to do with a tilde? It's obviously this one here, tilde P. In fact, in this case, we even have the same letter. So, we have tilde P. That means we're supposed to do tilde N. Okay, so we have to draw another box. All right, we like drawing boxes. I like drawing neat boxes, but I'm more or less incapable of doing that, so I'll draw a sloppy box. We also know what goes at the top. Since we're doing tilde N, we're saying to ourselves, let's assume the opposite of what we're trying to prove. I'm trying to prove that P is false. I'm going to pretend that it's true. Every box starts with a PA, but this time it's a PA for tilde N, and so line 3 will be P. Now, the way this works is I'm going to pretend that P is true, and I'm going to show you that if it was true, that would result in a disaster. This symbol is the symbol for a contradiction. It equals a contradiction. And in logic, a contradiction is merely a formula of the form P ampersand tilde P. P ampersand tilde P is m pure nonsense. It's like saying, ah, I like polar bears. Oh, and by the way, I don't like polar bears. It's like saying, ah, pie is delicious. And by the way, pie is not delicious. It's just saying one thing and turning around and saying exactly the opposite, and that is truly nonsense. And from a logical point of view, it's a disaster. Why do we want a disaster to show up in our proof? Because we're trying to show you that if P was true, that would be a serious problem. Therefore, P can't be true. When you're doing arrow in, you're showing that P leads to Q. When you're doing tilde in or tilde out, you're showing that your assumption leads to a disaster. 
if something leads to a disaster, well, then it can't be the case. So if P leads to a disaster, P must be false. If not P leads to a disaster, well, then P must be true. Okay, so back to our proof. Once you have the box set up, and we do because we have P at the top and a contradiction symbol at the bottom, now you're back up to the top. Lines 1, 2, and 3 are what we're looking at, and we're going to see if we can make any progress. Well, if I had a P, I could write C. Oh, I finally have a P, so that's going to let me write C. And the justification, of course, is 1, 3, arrow out. And now I check off 1. Well, notice that 2, 3, and 4 are all too short by themselves to be interesting, but I'm looking for a contradiction. And a contradiction is anything of the form P and tilde P. And notice what I have. I have C and tilde C. Ah, it's time to put those together. C, ampersand, tilde C. Big explosion. Yes. Oh, I probably shouldn't have done that. I just made a mess. But the contradiction is a logical disaster. I put the C and tilde C together. Logical disaster. Since P results in a logical disaster, then it can't be true, and so I have now finished the proof. 6 and 7 are the conclusions that I have proved, and all I need to do is write in their justifications. I was having too much fun drawing my explosion, and I see that I forgot to put the justification for line 5. What's it supposed to be? Well, we just took 2 and 4 and put them together, so all it is is 2, 4, ampersand in. What's the justification for tilde P? Well, it's the box that goes from 3 to 5. So that would be 3 through 5, and then the name of the rule, which is tilde in. Notice the box. I'm saying it's 3 through 5, and I'm saying it's 3 through 5 because that's the box that sits right on top of it. If I go up to line 3, and I will see that that was a PA for tilde N, and so I notice that there's a nice correspondence between the PA at the top and the rule that I use right below the box. What about line 7, tilde C arrow tilde P? Well, the box above it started at 2 and ended at 6, so that's 2 through 6, and then the name of the rule, arrow N, and I notice that there was arrow N up at the PA on line 2, and so once again I get this nice correspondence. Okay, in most respects this is a very simple proof and I hope that uh, I hope that this is making sense.